Right. This whole idea about uh, the nature of Eros, E R O S, and this um, Valentine's Day, and this day in which we r celebrate romantic love. We celebrate Eros. It's the word that describes what I call reproductive love. That is love that <laughs> normally people just stop at sex. <laughs> but Eros love is a very important love. Eros love is reproductive love. That's one of the natural, fundamental natural reasons that we're on the planet to reproduce. And the engine of reproduction is Eros love. It's erotic love. It is the love that attracts two people to come together to have sex. <laughs> but the purpose of the sex is to reproduce. So Eros love is the love of reproduction. And if we stop for a moment and take sex out of the equation and see Eros, erotic love, as the love of reproduction, as the love of one of our main drives, then we can get an understanding of what Eros is. And uh, then we can make some um, conclusions, some compare and contrast between the different types of love, namely, most importantly, agape and erotic love. We can make some com uh, comparisons and some contrasting and see what we can learn about both. On a day like today, Eros love is exalted. And uh, the aspect of Eros love that is exalted is the romance. You know, the, the trigger, the uh, propulsive component of reproductive love. And then we, we get... Um, embarrassed about uh, the physical act of reproduction and then we we kind of lose our minds and you know we fail to go forward in a straightforward analysis of what uh, we're talking about <clears throat> um, so folks compare eros and agape and in many cases, what happens is that um, agape wins. <laughs> and and uh, we consider agape to be the superior type of love. And uh, eros love, we consider to be uh, a lesser love. Uh, a useless love in, in so many words. Because we fail to see the step beyond the uh, eroticism of Eros love. Uh, what's going on? Nothing. Okay.
Be careful with that. Go right upstairs. Don't play around. <sighs> Today is um, Valentine's Day. And uh, most people take a leap. And it's a celebration of... Um, of erotic love, but we're embarrassed about celebrating erotic love, especially us Christian folks are embarrassed about um, celebrating erotic love, and uh, we are apt to suppress it underneath um, agape love, which we've been taught is the love of God. And um, I agree that agape is the love of God simply because of its unconditional nature. Whereas erotic love is filled with conditions, is filled with judgments at least on the natural. But <clears throat> I want to make a case for the divinity of erotic love. I want to propose that erotic love has a very noble purpose. That, that we are distracted from, again and again I'll say it, we are distracted from that noble purpose because of an act where we take our clothes off and, and uh, make funny faces and funny sounds and, and so we're embarrassed about it. But again, if we look past that embarrassing element of erotic love and we go on to the destination, the goal, the purpose of erotic love. And we understand that erotic love is not about is not about pleasure ultimately. Erotic love is about is about reproduction, is about uh, promoting life. It's about bringing new life into the world. If we look at erotic love with that noble purpose, we could then understand ourselves and, I propose, understand God uh, a little bit better. And so, let us take a look at erotic love. Erotic love, when analyzed, can be seen as the love of God. Now, uh, explain, please, what you're talking about. Okay. Um, two people are in a cocktail party, a man and a woman. And uh, it's a crowded room. And uh, there is music and, uh, you know, uh, social commentary, social interaction. And uh, two strangers glance at each other from across the room. A male, a man, and a woman glance at each other. They, they share a glance. And in that moment, each recognizes a reaction, an internal reaction, an emotional reaction, a romantic reaction, a powerful reaction. And then we skip nine months, and we skip a lot of social gates, 
being opened or closed, doors being opened or closed, intimacy developing, uh, perhaps other types of emotions, and uh, we come to the part where a baby is born. Life has found a way. And uh, we can ask the question, what happened? What happened to cause this most important of all reactions and actions uh, among human beings? What happened? And we go back to the night where those two strangers met in the night. And we look at it and we say, what happened? There was a glance. And then there was a recognition of something that existed between the two individuals. What happened? Well, what happened is the beginning of life. That glance was an intercourse on a psycho-spiritual level that resulted a new life coming into the world, a new soul, a new human, a new person coming into the world. That's not a small thing. And when we stop to analyze that glance, we see that there was no pre-determination anywhere between the two individuals. There was no preconceived uh, will involved on the part of either individual. As far as their reason the glance took place spontaneously. And huh? No. And um, and no one can take the, the blame for it. Neither individual can take the blame for it or the credit for it. Something compelled each of them to look across the room. And there was a, uh, an involuntary reaction and an involuntary uh, cascade. An involuntary ramification. And so, where did that come from? There was no voluntary cause. There was something pre-existing in each individual that that glance confirmed. I propose that there was an attraction inside of the individual. Now, you can break that attraction down to say it's instinctual. You can say that it is uh, some kind of psychosomatic uh, thing, psychological, that is embedded in the individual, where uh, each uh, individual is searching for, uh, instead of um, a personal trait that are best suited. productive purposes. In other words, uh, it is said that a man looks for inner wife, he looks for his mother. And uh, it is said that uh, a woman looks for her father. So the more, um, you know, kind 
scientifically, sociologically, each person in the pair looks for traits that are desirable for survival. How strong is the male? How capable is he to bring home meat for her income? How strong is the woman? How is her? There is also the possibility that it is God who is the source of that. But God puts into each individual the magnet. disagree with, and there are some which you may, but we can believe that erotic love has a basis in uh, divine purpose. Now we can ask, what about God? You know, God has children. His son has a wife. Um, he has children. He is father. All of these are characteristics that bring to view, for lack of a better word, divine reproduction. We have natural reproduction. These characteristics point out divine reproduction. And that's the end of that's the end of this.